Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the 2022 Korea Tito International Conference. I'm the Zhu Ru host, Andy Jiahao Liu. In this room, each presentation will last for 25 minutes, ideally 20 minutes for presentation and five minutes for Q&A. To ensure a smooth presentation, please mute yourself throughout the presentation. If you have any questions, please type your answer in type your questions in the chat box. Meanwhile, the presentation will be recorded. Thanks for your kind cooperation in advance. And now we will start the first presentation delivered by Mr. Daniel Savage entitled Perceived Efficacy of Content and Language Learning, Language Integrated Learning Across Academic Subjects. Mr. Daniel Savage has been teaching secondary level social studies and English in Korea for more than a decade. He has an interest in content and language integrated teaching, as well as task and project based learning. Mr. Daniel Savage, the stage now is yours. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I will share my screen with you. Uh, these materials are also available. They should be available from the Edzilla site if you want to download. There's a PDF version of this. Uh, so my name is Daniel Savage, uh, as Andy mentioned. I have been teaching in Korea for more than a decade, uh, and I've been teaching social studies mostly uh, to students whose second language is English. So they're learning through English, uh, but learning a variety of different subjects, uh, including social studies and others. Uh, and so I did some research on perceived efficacy of this approach to learning, learning different subjects through English. Uh, I'll explain a bit about my project, uh, and I hope this is helpful and interesting for you. Uh, I'll go through these sections. First, introduction and research objectives, a bit about design, uh, the statistical analysis and results, and a little bit about discussion. Uh, I will try to go quickly enough that we have time for questions at the end. Uh, first off, uh, my focus was content and language integrated learning, uh, CLIL for short. Uh, this is an approach to education where students use their second language to study some kind of content. Uh, so I mostly teach social studies, uh, but at our school we also have math teachers who teach through English, uh, English literature through English, of course, science through English, uh, and this content and language integrated learning, the idea is students will learn better and more efficiently and can learn both content and language at the same time. Uh, if you're studying some kind of content through your second language, that's the idea anyway. Uh, this approach has been adopted by the school where I teach. Uh, and so we have a variety of different subjects that are academic subjects uh, that are taught through both English and Korean medium instruction. So we have native Korean speaking teachers and native English speaking teachers uh, and students get a bilingual experience. It's not only English medium instruction, uh, but working at this school for more than 10 years uh, made me interested in whether different subjects might be more or less effectively taught through this approach. So that is where my research project comes in. Uh, here's a little bit of the research. Uh, I can't go into a ton of detail here, but uh, there are both positive and negative results uh, in past research. Uh, there are some studies, a lot of CLIL research has happened in Europe. Uh, there are some studies within secondary schools, for example. Uh, this is from Spain, where there are a school where some students study through this approach studying through their second language and some study through their first language. Uh, this study found an advantage for CLIL students on language skills uh, and similar results in Korea. This was for post-secondary students, uh, this Joe and Lee paper. Uh, post-secondary students, medical students, they 
had lectures in both English and Korean, uh, and they checked to see how much they were able to understand. Uh, they found that students were able to understand both through English or Korean. There wasn't much of a difference. Although st the st learners perceived their comprehension to be different, uh, they felt like they could understand more through Korean, which is kind of interesting. Uh, these are just a couple of examples, but there's quite a bit of positive results in the research. Uh, but there's also been some criticism uh, the, some of the criticism has focused around subject uh, selection bias uh, in programs like are mentioned on the left side. Uh, there's a school where some students study through CLIL and some don't. Uh, and so people were worried that maybe students who are more motivated, who are already better in their second language, uh, who are academically high performing might go into the CLIL programs. Uh, and so this could be a cause of the differences that are sometimes found between CLIL and non-CLIL groups. So later research, uh, the Spanish study beneath, uh, later research would try to have the whole school being in the CLIL program or not. Uh, if we have the entire school in the program, uh, we're less likely to have uh, selection bias affecting the results. Uh, and this particular study tested their science knowledge through Spanish and found actually the non-CLIL learners, students who were studying through their first language, did better. So broadly, there's kind of mixed research. Uh, there's been quite a lot of research on whether this approach is effective or not, uh, but it's been fairly mixed. Uh, if you're interested, a couple of review papers, Graham et al. 2018 and Goris et al. 2019, uh, both looked at a large number of studies. Uh, and both of them landed on more positive than negative, uh, although they both say that there isn't enough evidence to say that this is always effective, that it's effective in all cases. Uh, so with that concern about efficacy, uh, I've been teaching using this approach for quite a long time. Uh, it being effective is something I'm concerned about, uh, as well as a couple of other pillars. Uh, most CLIL programs run academic subjects through the second language. Uh, they will have not just one subject, not just a history class, but history and science and math and a variety of different subjects. We have reason to believe some subjects could be more effectively taught through the second language than others. There is reason to believe there may be a difference in efficacy. And the degree to which learners perceive some approach as effective can impact whether it's effective or not. Uh, so in my particular study, I was looking at the perceptions of learners, what learners thought was effective. And so I looked for uh, potential differences in perceived efficacy of English medium CLIL for content and language learning across academic subjects. Uh, my main interest was comparing different subjects. Is there a perceived difference across different subjects? A little bit about the design. Uh, the school is a public secondary school in Korea. Uh, it is a bit of a weird public school, slightly weird. Uh, but uh, learners from around the country can apply, but most of them come from the nearby area. Uh, this CLIL program is run school-wide, so students don't choose whether they want to learn in one language or another. All students at the school are taught in, through bilingual instruction. Uh, its school focuses mostly on social studies, uh, but there are also a bit of a focus on foreign languages as well. Uh, we have Chinese, Spanish, and French, as well as additional languages. Uh, and it's mainly bilingual instruction, Korean and English. Uh, there's a bunch of different subjects, as I mentioned. Uh, and my study, I used six categories of subjects that the school uses, uh, dividing into generally economics, politics and law, history and geography, English lit, science, and math. So I followed the same division for my study. Uh, the sample details are here. Uh, I don't think I need to go into too much detail here, but 
A uh, couple things to notice. There are a lot more females in the sample, uh, about 80%. Uh, and this is also true for the school's population. Uh, our students, we have about 80% female students here. Uh, there's a science high school next door, which is even more strongly school skewed towards male students. Uh, I looked at both current and former students. Uh, current students, I restricted to second and third grades. The high school has first, second, and third, but the first graders were not here for very long, and I wanted to focus on second and third grade students who had more experience with the program. More were second grade students, about 62, or more were third grade students, 62% uh, were in third grade. Uh, I also looked at former students. Uh, most of the former students had exited the program recently within two years. Uh, but some of them extended back as far as six years. So these students uh, I targeted, the subjects filled out a quantitative survey. They use Likert scales. You can see them at the bottom. The main measures were effic efficacy, perceived efficacy for content learning, perceived efficacy for language learning and difficulty, uh, on the left side is language and content learning, and on the right side is difficulty for the Likert scales at the bottom. Uh, and they ranked how effective do they feel English medium instruction is for the six categories that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this created ordinal data, which I use non-parametric statistics to analyze. So for the analysis, uh, I started with a sort of ANOVA, uh, non-parametric ANOVA, Friedman's test. Uh, and this test indicated that in all three, content and language and difficulty, there were differences between subjects. Uh, there were significant differences between them. And so I did Wilcoxon post hoc test to identify where those differences were. Uh, the six categories were compared with each other creating 15 different pairwise comparisons. Uh, and there were 15 for content, 15 for language learning, and 15 for difficulty. And I used a Bonferroni correction, uh, which basically means the usual 0 0.05 cutoff, p-value cutoff, was divided by 15. Uh, and I used that to determine which were significantly different and which were not. Uh, for the results for content learning, uh, I found there were many statistically different comparisons. Most were st statistically different. Uh, there were a few exceptions. Economics and politics and law were found not to be different. There was no significant difference there. Politics and law and history and geography and history and geography and science were not statistically different, uh, but the remainder were with English literature at the top seen as very effective uh, and mathematics at the bottom seen as least effective. Uh, one quick note as well, uh, this graph shows the response means, uh, but we have to be a little bit careful because means don't really work for ordinal data. It doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, and so these means and the numbers on the bars are not used in the actual statistical analysis, which were non-parametric. Uh, these are just here to give a kind of visual sense of where things shook out. The same is true for the following two graphs. Uh, language learning was very, very similar. Uh, we found similar results. Uh, there was a lot of statistical differences except for economics and history and geography and politics and law and history and geography. Uh, the remainders were seen as different with English lit at the top and mathematics at the bottom again. Difficulty was different. Uh, it seemed that students were tended towards the center of the Likert scale. A lot of them were very middling results. Uh, and most of these were not seen to be significantly different. Uh, the only exceptions our mathematics was seen as easier. For this graph, lower down means easier. Uh, higher is more difficult. 
And math was seen easier than some subjects, economics, politics, and law, English lit and science. And science was seen to be more difficult than history and geography. But the remainders were not significantly different. It seems that although students believe different subjects are differently effective uh, to study through English, there are not a lot of differences in terms of difficulty. Uh, to sum up the results, uh, there were many differences in efficacy uh, for both language and content learning, uh, but few differences in difficulty, perceived difficulty. Uh, there seemed to be a kind of four tier hierarchy with for content and language learning, English literature always ranking at the top, uh, social studies subjects generally next, uh, then science, then math. Uh, and there were consistent similar ratings for the three social studies categories. So even though our school divided them into separate categories, it probably makes sense to treat them as a single category, uh, I believe. Okay, uh, on to, I suppose, discussion and implications. It's very strange to talk so much without having interaction or questions from people. It is not like my normal teaching situation. Uh, but I will power through. Uh, there are a few things that I want to mention. Uh, I can't go into tons of detail just because of time, uh, but three main things that I want to point out. Uh, the first is uh, there is a question about why would students see things as more or less effective? Uh, my study does not address this, unfortunately. Uh, and some in the past have suggested, uh, like Swain here, Canadian researcher, uh, suggested that maybe subjects that are more abstract will be more difficult for students who are studying through a second language. Some parts of my study, my results might support this uh, in some way. Uh, science and math were seen as less effective. Some people might think science and math are more abstract maybe than a history or English literature class. I think that could be debated whether that's actually true, uh, but perhaps these fit with this kind of interpretation. Uh, however, this is complicated by the difficulty results. Uh, math was seen as less effective by students, uh, but they also saw it as the easiest to study through English. So if there is some kind of connection here between abstraction and difficulty, uh, it's not going to be simply that uh, difficult subjects are less effective and easier subjects are more effective. Uh, additional research is needed to figure out why students believe what they do about how effective different subjects are. Uh, and this is definitely one of the limitations of my study uh, I did not address this at all. Uh, this is definitely needs more work in the future. Uh, another is attention towards how CLIL is taught. Uh, a lot of early research on this approach uh, was focused on, is this effective or not? Uh, and a lot of it actually focused on language learning. Is this effective for le learning the second language? Uh, there's been more research recently uh, looking at specific aspects of implementation of these programs, uh, collaboration between teachers or differences in program implementation between different countries. Uh, and my study follows the same trend uh, and suggests, and a few others have also gone in this area uh, about the selection of academic subjects and whether different subjects and choosing subjects carefully could help to make these programs more effective. Uh, and finally, uh, we need a lot more research to find out whether what I found is true for other public schools in Korea. Uh, it would not hurt to do this again at my exact same school uh, to see if these trends are still true. Uh, in post-secondary in Korea, other contexts, uh, there's some content and language integrated learning in lower levels as well, middle and elementary school, as well as examining other contexts beyond Korea in order to see whether this is holding true. My study was quite limited. It was a 
small initial study and a lot more research must be done. Uh, ad additionally, mine was a uh, quantitative study. If we had qualitative study as well, that could be really effective to try to figure out why do students believe what they believe. Uh, I only look to see, is there a difference in their perceived efficacy? Uh, but we can't do much with that without finding out more details uh, and particularly looking for why students think different subjects are differently effective. Uh, and longitudinal approaches would also be helpful uh, to see whether this actually holds true or not. Uh, and so before any changes are made, uh, it's important for us to find out more details. Uh, my study is not enough to base changes on program subject selection, I think. Uh, the full paper of this study is available through the Createssel Journal. Uh, if you're a Createssel member, you can receive this as part of your membership. So if you're interested in more details, you can check there. Uh, and then the references that I mentioned are also included here. I will not read them to you, uh, but it, they are in the P PDF file if you need them, if you're interested in following up on any of these. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you like this little dog. It's a pretty great little dog. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you can ask. We will have question time very soon. Uh, but later, you can also contact me through this email if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to open it up to questions now if anyone has any questions. Uh, I don't have any questions. However, I just want to tell you thank you for your um, for your research. Uh, yeah, I found it pretty interesting. Oh, thank you so much. I was also interested in it. As <laughs> I've been at this school for a long time, and so this was uh, a subject close to my heart. I guess. I guess. All right. Nice to do a little case study on there. Yeah, I understand. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Anyone else? Any questions or comments are also cool. I am. Okay, Miss Daniel, in the chat box, Miss Collins commented, thank you. It was really interesting to hear about it. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Collins. Uh, I hope it was interesting and helpful. I may have missed part of it. This is uh, the same person I talked a minute ago. I may have missed part of it. I was just curious, how many students uh, did you have in your case study? Oh, this is great. It was uh, not really a case study. There was quite or, a few students. Uh, the study had 123. Uh, okay. Yeah, the total was 123. 100 um, females and 23 males. And more current students than former students. Okay. Uh, what, when I initially, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna ask what uh, what year they were. Were they their the age range? Uh, the second graders are about 16, 16, 17, and third graders are 17, 18. Ah, uh, so the sec second and third year. Okay. Yeah, of the high school. The in Korea they start counting the the grades again uh in canada it would be 11th and 12th grade right right okay yeah, yeah I, was, I was just curious uh, based on their perceptions i was just kind of curious what kind of mind frame they might be in you know based on their age yeah okay well thank you again i appreciate no it okay so in the chat box miss eileen covering commented this might be a silly question. However, wouldn't there be a correlation between students who are stronger in foreign languages and humanities and the weakness in science and math in your study? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't think that's a silly question at all. I think that's a great question. Uh, one of the possibilities is 
Uh, these students are selected. We select students who are interested in this kind of humanities and foreign languages thing. So yeah, it is possible that for them, they feel like studying this through English is difficult uh, and that studying math and science, but social studies are less difficult. Uh, that's definitely true. Uh, I tried to word the questions so that they would compare with the across subjects uh, and hopefully get a sense of that. Uh, but this is a great point, and it could be that that is the reason for the differences in their responses. Uh, this is why further research in other contexts is really necessary. That's a really great point. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the in the chat box, do you think this the basis of this study could be applied effectively in a non specialized school? I think that would be very important, actually, uh, if there was a school that was using this kind of approach, uh, but it wasn't specialized more on social studies that could be really interesting to see if there would be a difference. Uh, that kind of research would be great to help explain whether what I found was actually due to a uh, real difference in their perceived efficacy. True, true. Okay, so thanks for your interesting presentation, Mr. Daniel. If there is no questions, then I will end this session and hope you guys will enjoy other sessions and do if you have any follow-up questions please feel free to contact Mr. Daniel via email or via the diesel the services thank you so much and thanks for all your help Andy that was very helpful so thank you and I will end the session thank you thank you